we are standing here in uh, the Birch Bay Square um, on our way to the beach. Beachwood RV Resort in Birch Bay. So we're, uh, uh, we're right beside the I-5, <laughs> so if you hear traffic, you know what it is. Yeah, so we're on our way there. We just stopped at the grocery store to pick up some provisions for the weekend. And um, it's kind of drizzly out here, so we're going to head inside the truck and find some place to hunker down until we can check in. It's really early. Um, Check-ins, I believe, 2 o'clock. Yeah. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but we had to hit the border early because we got there at 7 a.m. And it was, uh, I'd say, an hour and a quarter for us. Maybe, possibly an hour and a half. Yeah, I it, think, that yeah. That was nuts on a long weekend coming yeah. from Canada into the States. We but, thought by uh, being super early on a Saturday morning, a lot of the schools had a non-instructional day yesterday. So I was thinking, ah, if people are going to go to the States. Maybe they'll go on Friday. But I guess there's those of us who still have to go to work on Friday, despite the kids having their day not off. Her, no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a day off and then I got to go spend some time with my uh, nine-month-old, uh, well, we went and spent some time with our nine-month-old uh, grandson while their mom and dad went to a Christmas party. <laughs> so. Yeah, Christmas party. Yeah. Tis, Start of November. Tis the season. <laughs> Bay, Washington. Um, we went down there to check out a um, RV resort that we had been invited to. Um, we got, um, we put in for a draw. We went to Camping World in Burlington and entered a draw for a barbecue or a motorbike or whatever. And turns out Miriam won some free nights at one of three resorts, one of which is in Birch Bay. So we went down to check it out. Very drizzly. It's very wet. It's November, so. Yes. <laughs> As you can tell, the leaves are falling. The leaves have mostly fallen from the tree. We actually raked our site out just so that we could walk around without tripping on leaves and stuff. So yeah, they... a lot of trees here. Um, it would provide a lot of cover in windy days, rainy days, of course. Um, oh, Wrigley. Oh dear, Wrigley found something to roll in. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, we, we pulled into our site. Uh, <laughs> luckily I saw that there was uh, some railway ties there as a bit of a, a curb or a bumper going into our site. I just had to back into it. It's not a big deal. Fairly easy. Although if you're walking on it, it was about two or three inches of leaves thick. Yeah. It, it was a it was a good uh, stack of leaves in there. It was very soft. We had we have a rake with us. Um, it's just a small rake, and just cleared the walkway because my running shoes were soaked from walking through the leaves, and uh, the dogs had all kinds of leaves and debris attached to them. So we just cleared, kind of cleared up the site a little bit. So these are what, thirty amps maybe? Probably thirty. Amps. <laughs> so this area looks like it's 30 amps, kind of a nice wide open. It's, it's almost like a communal fire pit. Yeah, it's a really, it looks like a group type campsite. Yes. Really get to know your neighbors. <laughs> but it's fully electrical. Yeah. Uh, just no sewer, that's all. No sewer, no water. No sewer, no water, so you have your electricity. You can microwave and have a fireplace. But have make sure you bring water. This looks like a it's tenting. So I guess you pull your vehicles around here. So we have electrical. 
So you could, looks like it could be 30 amp. Apparently it's on. <laughs> um, but it doesn't look like you can park your vehicles here. So definitely tenting and nice big open field. And then behind us here is some laundry. There are three sets of washer dryer. Let me say that again. Particular building. Okay, so three sets of washers and dryers. Yes. Just go have a peek. So you got water and cable. And 30 amp. 30 amp. No sewer? That's probably what's under the brick uh, there. That's probably, yeah. I would guess under the brick would be a sewer. Yeah. Well, what? Right there. Okay, these look like they're pull through sites. Yeah. And we have some guys over there playing frisbee golf. <laughs> over in the trees. <laughs> State Park. Um, years ago I had done a uh, run through the State Park. It's not a huge one. Um, it had uh, do, do, do 100 and... Oh, I it was like 165, 170 sites in, in, this, like in the that. State Park. Yeah. So they only had 74 of them open at this time of year and apparently they had shut off the water and winterized everything already so if you were going camping there you would be dry camping yes for sure. um, uh, they did have some electrical hookups though there were electrical hookups but there was definitely no sewer no water um, yeah, but they did have a sanding station the scenery yeah they they had a sanding dump yes the scenery in there was just fantastic some of the old cedar growth just they were, I swear to they were probably five and a half six foot diameter those were some big well, this is Birch Bay State Park. We came in from the east, which is the Beachwood RV resort that we're staying at, which is not too far. It's like a quarter mile away, half mile away maybe. Uh, this top part here is, it looks like there's roughly 70 sites available. That's the main campground. Everything to the south of this road here is an overflow, which is currently closed, as you can plainly see. But it is a fairly large state park. Lots of day use area. Uh, it's a very nice park, and the dogs seem to just love it. This one would definitely fit our rig. Yeah, but I don't know that that one has any utilities, Brent. <sighs> So, as we're walking through the state park here, we are noticing that there is electrical, there is water, there's no sewer, they have a sandy uh, dump. Although there are spigots for water, it does say on the front, or the main sign at the entryway, that it has been winterized. So I don't know if water is available or not. Probably not. So that is from November 1st till... To probably. March 31st. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. So they're not huge sites, so there's no way we're getting in here. <laughs> Although, you look at some of these cedars, they're huge. Yeah, they are giant. Just, probably only 100 feet high, but still. The base of that is, I'd say, a good five and a half foot uh, diameter. 
Now, if you look to the left, there's a Cougar half-ton trailer just leaving. And I'd say that is probably about a 28 foot. Uh, 26, 28 foot, and that's uh, probably as large as you would want to go in this park. The roads are fairly narrow, and as you can see straight ahead, there's a massive cedar on each side of the road, so if you can't fit, you're not going to. Well, this is a cool one here. Yeah. It's a little horseshoe, and you pull through and then park behind. The other old fire pit, that's nice. Yeah. Well, that's like that one there, but it's they've got a tent set in there, so. Yeah. Um, so this site would be truly lovely. You're looking out over the water. This is a fantastic view. And the tide is in right now, so. Mm. Uh, we're probably about 100 yards off the water right now. Although, <laughs> the Wrigley spotted a squirrel. <laughs> okay, so we are here in fall, and I imagine during the summer this would just be packed. And I would see why. It's a beautiful place. So they have these little drive-through ones. I mean, I guess you could well, pull it, your trailer it's through. Drive -through. It's just, uh, like a little horseshoe driveway, uh, but I've got it pegged off so you can't take your rig further back, and it's perfect for tenting. Yeah. So well, if, you, if you, you could still days, you could still park your rig along here. Yeah, a smaller one, yes. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to go anything over 24 feet, though. Okay. But the, on the other side of those posts, you've got your picnic table, fire ring. Frankie's losing her mind with all the squirrels and stuff out here. We need to do the Wrigley cam again. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta attach it better, though. No, it was actually perfect the way it was. It well, sat on her back, and all you could see is her ears. Just, <laughs> do, 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 just do, do, do. center so I think it's just a kind of like a meeting area maybe there's a bunch of picnic tables in front of it so you can have your family gathering there and big playground big playground and and some public washrooms so this is a nice area and then across the way is, is the beach. we are right on the south end of Birch Bay I just came across this little this sign here um, and it just talks a little bit about uh, Birch Bay and the first settlers, and then when the white. I never really was very good at history, so <laughs> I'd have to stand there and read the whole thing to you. Um, I took a picture, so I'll post that along with everything else, and you can have a look at the picture and do some reading on your own. <laughs> okay. okay. It's really nice for a walk. Yeah. We're back up on top of the hill um, by the uh, another picnic area. So they have ample parking all along here and then tons of picnic tables. There's just a few here and then a bunch more through the trees there. I guess a party house or enclosed area. Yeah. Beside a picnic, uh, basketball court. So lots to do in this park. Come here, Rick. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That way? What? 167 sites. So they have 74 sites that are available um, for winter camping. So and then Birch Bay, it's basically a summer community. Um, Definitely. It, the road just winds along the beach and they, um, a lot, some of the stores were actually closed until March. So I guess there wasn't enough business to keep them going throughout the winter. So this little candy shop, it's called the Sea Shop. It's full of homemade candies and that sort of thing. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, it, it's a second generation candy shop. They started in, uh, I believe, 1972 or 1978. And they've been making uh, their own candy there for, well, 
almost 50 years. But it looks like they are a, it's a seasonal store where... Oh, definitely seasonal because they are, uh, there's a sign on the front door that says uh, closed for the season, they reopen March 28th. Okay. Um, so this is a beach town, so people don't tend to hang out here too much in the winter or after uh, the end of October. So we're just sitting out here um, outside this uh, little cafe and I thought it was really cute. Birch Bay Teriyaki Cafe and they've got Japanese, Chinese and American food all in one. So I guess when you're in a small town you need to uh, bring everything all together in one one bundle so um, <laughs> it's really quite cute. A lot of the uh, buildings are a little bit older in this community. There is um, a lot of little bungalows. Most of it is facing the beach which is right behind us here. So we have this lovely beach um, view. RV park. Is it park or resort? I think it's resort. Sure, it's one of them. <laughs> Pretty sure it's resort. Um, uh, yeah, they've got enough amenities to make it a resort. Yeah. So they, they've got a lot of things there. They've got three pools, I believe one or two hot tubs, a soccer field, a ball diamond. Well, ball diamond, they've got a small backstop. I wouldn't call it a ball diamond, but <laughs> you can play baseball there. Um, and they had a bunch of. Um, Horseshoe. Oh, horseshoe pits all yeah. over the place. Uh, frisbee golf course all around. Uh, a big playground for kids. They had a, a store that was actually in the park. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what else? Oh, geez. They had a lot of stuff there. They had um, quite a large um, laundry system. They had one where there was three, um, you, three sets of washer and dryer. Um, and then the other room by the store had... Yeah, the uh, laundry more. room that was by the store uh, had 20 washers, I believe 8 or 9 dryers, and then a couple of large industrial sized washers as well. So they'll handle any of your <laughs> laundry needs, that's for sure. They had a variety of different sites. They had. The site we stayed at was 50 amps, had water and sewer. There was no cable there. Um, thank goodness. We had the wine guard, so yeah, the wine guard say, 360. Thank goodness for the wine awesome. guard. Um, some of the other sites had like 30 amp, but they had cable and water and sewer. And then there were some tenting sites. They still had electrical though. Uh, there, yeah, a lot of them had electrical. Uh, yeah. There was the map, once you look at it, um, it has rental sites. Uh, cable availability, 50 amp, 30 amp, dry camp. Um, some had sewer, some had electrical, some had both. It, it was just a mix of any, uh, I guess, configuration of camping or RVing that you could think of. So we figured there was probably about 200 sites in total. I, I would say roughly 200, yeah. The, it was uh, fairly well uh, spread out. Lots of trees around the edges. Um, our spot, uh, the trees that we were in, they're probably a good 60, 70 feet high. Mm -hmm. uh, although it rained our last night there and uh, <laughs> we could hear it. Yeah, drip, 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 drip all drip. night long. Um, so now about our site. So we got there and it's fall. So it, uh, the, the site was covered in probably six inches of leaves. Um, that's not an exaggeration. Here we are. Nice, brisk Monday morning. It gives you an idea of what our campsite looks like. Uh, just a basic idea of lots of leaves. Um, 
I'll show you in the next campsite what this looked like when we first got here a couple days ago. And, uh, well, this is Beachwood RV Resort in Birch Bay, Washington. It's at the south end of the bay. It's actually a really nice place, very large. Uh, so basically, this is what our site looked like when we got here a couple days ago. As you can see, down the sides, they have uh, railway ties to basically give you a border for where to back into. Um, you can barely see them. <laughs> They're about uh, eight inches tall. And uh, it goes all the way back. Uh, there are all kinds of sticks and twigs, even larger sticks. Uh, like a three inch dia two and three inch diameter all throughout this so when I backed in I had a good idea of what there was uh, when you're backing into a site like this you should always at least walk it once see if there's any uh, larger pieces that may have fallen and then uh, yeah we, we backed in no problem got everything set up and Miriam went to raking because uh, she doesn't like tripping over sticks and we are in, basically in the, the edge of the park. It's all covered with large trees. I'd say the average height is probably a good 60, 65 feet anyways for most of them. But, uh, throughout the park, there's certain spots that are rental units, which uh, they're basically uh, fully skirted small cabins, a uh, little mobile homes you could say and uh, there's lots of rental units throughout here uh, there's certain places have cable available some don't uh, dry camping area there's places where you're actually I believe you're allowed fires everywhere in here but you have to bring your own fire ring but this place is uh, pretty nice and it was fully lined with uh, railway ties so you could barely see the railway ties that's how many leaves were in the lot I guess uh, this time of year they don't have a lot of people doing the groundskeeping or might, they might have been off work for a week or on holidays or something. I'm not saying it's a, a bad thing. but The other thing too, whenever we took the dogs on, it, it was a little bit wet. Um, it didn't really start raining until today um, or last night it started raining and uh, so when we took the dogs out Maddie's belly was covered in mud, and Wrigley's paws were covered. she's got covered. short legs. <laughs> <laughs> they were both pretty dirty when we got back to the trailer. So and then they come inside, and the towels we used to dry them off, or clean them off, it was just like a ton of dirt that just kept getting drug in, and uh, trying to keep the trailer clean was really hard. Yeah, there yeah, was a yeah, lot of dirt. Most of the ground that was around the trailer, uh, once we raked all the leaves out of the way, was just dirt. Yeah, so um, not ideal for fall or winter camping because you're just going to be battling the dirt non-stop. That yep. was a, my thoughts on Beachwood. I was not overly impressed. Um, we didn't get a chance to check out the pool and hot tub situation. It was currently under construction. I guess they were uh, rebuilding they were, a couple of concrete walls. They were working on it. So we... Uh, but this time of year, nobody's going swimming anyways. A yeah, hot tub would be nice, though. <laughs> would have been nice, but uh, yeah, there, there wasn't a lot of people in the park. Um, this time of year, it's definitely a seasonal area. Yeah. So, in that park, you have memberships, which you can purchase, but that's not what we're trying to do. We don't want to buy a membership and just go to one park. We want to be able to explore at this point in time yes yeah anyways that's our thoughts on beechwood and birch bay and we will yep see you next week so bye for now bye for now don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications and give us a thumbs up mm -hmm.